Hello and welcome back to another Turtle walkthrough of the buyer terminal. So today we want to look at suggesting data categories and data packets and we want to specifically go into that and how we create them and how the quality of what we ask will determine the quality of what we receive back from the people we're actually purchasing that information from. So the first thing we want to do if we look into this like we did last time is we're going to go up to the search category packet function. Now because the information we want to buy is not available here what we want to do is we want to suggest something that will go to the moderator server at Turtle. So if we want to suggest a category, uh, say for instance, let's choose a random icon. And we're going to call it hearing. Category description, so we're going to be dealing with um, various... audio issues okay so that's going to create the category so this is the what is going to nest our information here within the system so we're going to have an audio category and that's going to I don't care if your Bose sound system or what was Boston acoustics you'd be able to go inside and then we can start suggesting our packets that will sit inside of our our system over here but the first thing we want to do is we want to look at um, a packet. So we want to buy something on someone's sports preference, right? So we'll call it sports packet two or three. And if in this packet, what are we going to be describing? So when we had originally looked at searching through our packets, we saw that sports packet whatever or background packet two had a slight description underneath. So it'll be a general description of what this packet is. So we're going to be dealing with the NFL. People seem to like the NFL. Now the questions, this is the important part, right? This is the information we want to buy off of individuals. This is the data we want to understand about their social, emotional, physical behaviors, the qualitative and the quantitative. And this is what's important. This is what makes our research models very flexible, more organic, right? They make it uh, more humanistic, which is important. They add some spirit to the data, which is currently lacked with how we do a lot of our research and apply our backpropagation of machine learning is understanding people from certain algorithms, but those algorithms do not tie in the quality of who the individual is, right? The emotion that causes the choice that tells us what we should or should not do. The real driving factor, because we all want to hope that people are logical, right? But the real crux of it is that it all comes down to us being emotional, and it's the emotion that determines our choice. So here's our questions, right? So if we're going to ask a question about the NFL, which is your favorite which is your favorite team, okay? Something quite simple, and that's just a basic question. So if I was gonna put that in there, say I don't care who it is, uh, I don't know much about football, whether it be the Green Bay Packers, or Miami Dolphins, or I don't, the Philadelphia Eagles, or the New England Patriots, right? I'm gonna put that in place. Or say for instance, the person has, you know, they do have a favorite team, but within that they have more people that they have that are specific to, um, what would you say, their uh, fantasy football league, right? So list the players in your fantasy football league. Because most of the time the fantasy football league is going to match their favorite team, right? I don't know. I don't know much about football, but I'm taking a stab at this, folks. So if we're going to list the players in the league, right? And because I've selected multiple, the difference between a basic and the multiple, the basic says that the person, when going to add it into the, the packet, when they're going to be answering this information, right, in the data packet, which means they can only put one response in here. That's a non-dynamic response. But for a question that is a multiple response, what that determines is that the question is dynamic in its form filling. So as they fill out one dialog box, they can choose to add multiple, right? So if they have 30 players, they can add 30 dialog boxes, and that's going to coincide with the multiple. So that's the difference between these. So if you have Fantasy Football League, it would be number 20, and then it would open up a new dialog box, and you could put 33 or 11 or double zero, and that would be the difference between a multiple and a basic, where the basic only says, which is your favorite team, and that's the only dialog box that can be filled out. But the multiple means you can have as many as you like that would pertain to what this question might be. Now, the last choice that we have is image. So if you have, say, for instance, you want to know 
what the inside of someone's house looks like on Sunday football, right? How they're going to set it up, the food they have out, how many people are in there, what they're, what they're wearing, right? The quality of that environment. You could ask them to please upload a video, a picture, not a video. <laughs> please upload a picture of your living room in front of the TV for football Sunday. Now for the first time ever, you're gonna get insight into people's personal lives. You can actually see what is going on inside of their homes during that day at that exact time, right? And that will cause them to upload it. So now if you're talking about analysis, now you're inside people's lives. So it's not like regular information on the internet where they create profiles and we try and aggregate data together from all these different data points to assume that John Smith or Jane Smith have all these different characteristics, so this is what we want to market them. Yeah, that's all well and good, but beyond that, when you start looking at source data, like information of images inside people's lives and how they feel about certain things, now you're starting to figure out who they really are and how they act inside their homes. This is a little bit different than the kind of digital identity or digital twin that people think that they are online as opposed to what they are really doing internally within themselves. So the beauty of this is that we have, and you can get creative, this is beyond NFL, you can use this into any type of research you want, financial options, it doesn't matter what it is, the options are limitless, it just depends on how well you can come up with ideas to solve the things you're actually trying to solve. The whole point of this is to remove guesswork out of the equation for you. So by having basic, having people put it in in a one-time shot, where they can do multiple dialogue responses for you means you can get lists of information on these people, whether it be qualitative or quantitative. And beyond that, you can buy images that are very personal, whether it might be uh, before and after images of someone's surgery, um, what's inside their medicine cabinets, you can purchase that information, photos of that, how their house looks, how they maintain things, the inside of their car, selfies, it doesn't matter what it is. Now you have a real encompassing picture of what actually makes up that individual. So what people called the digital twin is something I thought was rather a fallacy, but now using Tartle and source information, which is what you find here, makes the digital twin an actual digital twin because now you start to add the emotion and the choice into this model, this digital model you have of a person to actually make them themselves, but in a digital format. This is gonna be the defining difference. So. Your ability to ask your questions succinctly and with accuracy will determine whether or not there is truth in the situation or what people upload. You will receive some sort of anomalies. But beyond that is when you're buying that information, if I'm asking a question that I know for a fact there's only one way it can be answered, you're going to know right out of the gate if someone is lying on that information. So it's going to tell you whether or not this is something you should pursue or you should omit as a part of your research or data or whatever model that you're trying to uh, accomplish or solve or use to come to some sort of conclusion in this world. And I ask you to go in and you know kind of test it out, add some suggestions, and once you've put them in there, it's pretty simple. All you gotta do is hit create packet, and that goes over to the moderator server. Your suggestion has been sent, and we will review it. So hopefully that was helpful, and if you have any more questions, I urge you to leave some comments in the bottom of the video. Um, and then I can expand even further on certain functions within the system. But please sign up, test it out, and start looking into that source data so you can make some real effective decisions.